This is the MG4 Essence, and I'm here to tell you why you should be stretching for this car over, say, the X side. So in this review, I'm going to detail why that is. Is it maybe the features, drive, charging ability, efficiency, or what? Find out right after this. G'day, my name's Chris, and I cover electric cars from an Aussie perspective. And I've been fortunate to drive almost all available electric vehicles in Australia. So if you wanna find out what's the best car to drive, subscribe, turn on notifications, and yeah, hang around for the next video. Starting at around $52,000 drive away, it's only about all $3,000 more than the Excite version. But I would argue you get a lot of bang for your buck for that. Starting at the front here, most everything is the same, seriously. LED headlights, run lights, turn signals. But down here is your first difference. There's actually a camera in the front bumper along with the mirrors, enabling the car to have 360 degree views, which you don't get in the Excite version. And I'll speak later on about safety features of the MG4, but just know that, yeah, I think this definitely helps out a lot. And the safety stuff alone, I think may be worth that extra bit of coin. The profile of the MG4 is perhaps its best part. From its sweeping lines to the front, the way it just cuts through with this really sharp door line up here, through to the rear cluster with the brake lights and how it just all amalgamates beautifully together. So a few other features that are not found on the X-Site, whereas this one, the Essence, and that is on the rear spoiler, which has some integrated lighting into this portion of it. You don't get that in the X-Site. Little detail and owners who know the difference will say, ah, straight away, that's the uh, essence. Uh, also, <laughs> I'm here. This spoiler it also helps complete this look of their car. Along with that black roof, which I'm not too fond of, to be honest, especially in Australian summers where that sun can get really hot and being black is just gonna heat up the car more than is really necessary. But nonetheless, definitely stand-up features here when you go to the Essence, it's gonna be this rear spoiler, it just makes the car look complete in my humble opinion. The LED lighting, which is nah, neither here nor there, but definitely the 360 degree camera suite, but misses out on still front sensors. So it'd be good to see that in maybe next gen MG4. In the Essence, just like in the Excite, there's a manual lift in the boot, and boot space is remarkably similar, albeit maybe 13 litres less. And that's because of this parcel shelf in the back here. So you've, instead of 363 litres, you've only got 350 litres. Small difference, but to some it might actually be <laughs> everything. I found it interesting that they've got this really cool design where you can actually uh, fold in the edges of this board and tuck it down to the bottommost position in the boot. Or if you just leave them out, leave in the upper position, giving you now what they're gonna be calling a sub boot. But realistically, that space is only about that, and uh, it's not very accommodating. Sure, you can hide things in there, and maybe would-be thieves wouldn't know there's anything underneath it, but all there is is just a run-flat kit. If I put the seats down in the MG4, that space increases to 1,165 litres. And for those playing at home, yes, there's three tether points in the back there, no 12 volt socket, which I guess is disappointing. And uh, let's talk about the lack of frunk. Yep, there is no frunk. Under this cover, I swear to goodness, there's some space. Good, maybe 30, 50 liters, especially if this 12 volt battery here that runs all the low voltage stuff is pushed back. Why it was emitted, it's a small car, I get it. But for that very reason, you want to be using as much space of the car that you can. And this is an obvious solution. The MG4 comes in seven different colors with white being included in the price, or all the other six, just $700 extra. Let's do some driving of the MG4 Essence. And well, I don't know, I had doubts about doing this because I felt to myself, what, what's really different here? Uh, does it actually handle any different? And to be honest, mm, don't think so. <laughs> anyway, um, so let, let, let me try though, let me try. So I guess first up, turning circle in this car is great. Great little run around car. You know, if you're wanting something for shopping, pick up the kids, running errands, uh, you name it, that steering, um, the small turning circle, it just makes for a really pleasant um, experience. If you've ever been in a car with a large turning circle, uh, you'll know full well, you, you avoid 
happen to turn that damn thing around and potentially making like a two, three, four, five point turn, this you'll find will actually make it most time, first time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great that way. In terms of performance numbers, look, you've got uh, kilowatts of power, 150 kilowatts or 180 kilowatts in this one, or in the uh, 64, you've got 250 newton meters of torque, but this one is 350 newton meters of torque, which means that when you give it a bit of stick, it's going to get up super fast. Not that it actually changes the towing capacity of this car, it's still rated at no matter which one you choose. 500 kilograms braked or unbraked, so that's a little bit disappointing. But look, I'm doing like 30, 40 k's per hour right now, and I can go up to 80, so I'm gonna punch it. And we're there, it's like that. Like, it's got great acceleration. It actually feels faster than it really is. And I did some testing, that zero to 100 thing that we all love, because for some people, that's gonna be the difference between buying a car or buying a car, really? I'd, I'd question you, but okay, sure. Um, 6.5 seconds in this one. And uh, yeah, that's it's plenty performance enough. And did I do it better? You bet I did. It's actually, I think MG, they're underselling themselves here. I think they should redo those figures because they could actually, um, I think, demonstrate it to be better with its pickup, get up and go, its charging, and uh, a few other areas, which I'll try to mention in this review, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's understated and it over delivers, and you can't argue with that. It's like, um, if people enjoy driving, uh, you gotta enjoy this car. So, in terms of ride, handling, uh, performance characteristics, especially through some lovely country roads like this one, it's much like the other car, so I would probably recommend that you go check out my Excite review uh, where I actually delve into that a bit further and give you my honest opinion on why this car is such a great car to drive. But the elephant in the room still here is that it doesn't have lane centering. It has emergency lane departure, which is over and above the Excite level. Uh, that's going to mean it's going to really aggressively pull you back to the center of the lane if it thinks you're doing something wrong. And it's monitoring the lines and you can see here on my little driver's display what it understands the world to look like and if I'm going to deviate from that. So I've, just got, I've got a car a bit behind me, I'm just going to deviate here a bit. There you go. And gave me a little nudge, gave me that little warning and that's great, that's all fine. Again, issue I have around not um, uh, lane centering just means that if you're the sort of driver who does lots of boring, boring freeway, highway driving and you want an effortless driving experience where you need not have to do a lot of uh, steering inputs and just allow the car to basically help you keep that um, car beautifully positioned the lane, this is not that car. This is not that car. It's not going to do it. And, uh, and, and the other issue here, and look, I've probably got to pull over, get out, lock the car and get back in um, to demonstrate what I call uh, Groundhog Day, or some might call it the goldfish memory syndrome. And uh, let me just pull over and I'll show you what I mean. I'll get back in the car and um, watch what happens to the driver settings I've got, like one pedal driving and other shenanigans. When you get back in the car, two things happen. It slides down with the uh, climate control sort of stuff. So uh, do you need that every single damn time? No, you do not. Next up, your drive mode. You've got snow, you've got eco, normal, sport and custom, very customizable. So awesome, thanks so much MG. But if you select, let's say sport, and that's your jam. When you get back in the car, it's gonna go back to normal. Energy recovery stays at high typically, so yeah, awesome and all, but a real frustration I also have with this is that one pedal driving has to be reselected every time that you've gotten out and locked the car and then you get back into it. So let's say you are doing errands around town and you're getting in and out the car a lot and you love one pedal driving like I do. It's so annoying. Um, I've criticized many car makers for this and if you can't, give the user the experience that they like and they have to frequently and frustratingly 
delve back into here and before they start their drive to reconfigure the car in a way that they like it that is just a really bad experience so my recommendation here to mg is going to be put in driver profiles enable it to be saved so that if your preference is let's say custom drive mode along with one pedal driving that's what it should be every time i get back in this car I shouldn't have to go car symbol, driving, sport, one pedal driving. It's going to add 10, 20 seconds to every single journey and over, over a year of use it's going to be not minutes, hours of your life wasted doing something so, so, so basic. Anyway, so, so okay, let's just, uh, let's finish off this driving section soundly because that was, um, that was definitely really uh, frustrating and I hope you understand what I mean by this whole uh, system here. Something that I'm really appreciating manufacturers doing, and this MG is included in this, is that you've got your fob in your pocket. So you just press this little button to open the door and when you get in, the car is already turning itself on. Sure, if it's really, really asleep, it's gonna take a good 10 seconds for this to fire up. So I found that you can engage, park, and reverse, and drive, but if you connect your phone too soon, it's actually gonna not connect, like with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay through what is wired connection. Not bad, love it. I think I've found, caught myself out with a few times is that I'm so used to like a Tesla with walk-away lock and uh, some other car makers have that and uh, so I walk away from this expecting it to do the same thing and it doesn't and uh, I leave the car on and then uh, someone will come to me maybe at my work and say Chris your car lights are still on and it's like oh that's right you know because the car turns on when you get in so I hope that when you get out it will turn itself off and well yeah maybe lock itself would be nice but at least turn itself off it is one big takeaway from this video the $2,000 extra is, I think, worth it for these reasons alone. Safety features. You see, when you get the Excite version, you only get about all in total nine active driver safety features, but go for the essence, and now you get blind spot detection, read across traffic alert, 360 degree camera, and more. So what do I think about that? All those, like 40 in total now, um, probably should actually be included in the Excite base price. Uh, and it's a little bit disappointing that you've got to pay the additional what $3,000 from the uh, Excite 64 versus the SN64 to get those. When you've got um, cruise control on, you can actually um, increase your follow distance or decrease it through um, using the uh, left-hand joystick here. And if there's a car in front, it's actually gonna follow that car in front and uh, it does an okay job, albeit it might slow down on curves, um, like on a freeway situation. I, I don't understand why it does that, but it does that and it's, <laughs> it's a bit frustrating. Doing speed up and speed down, you just press this joystick up uh, quickly just to do 5k per hour increments or just hold it and it'll do 1k per hour increments. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, driving the MG4, uh, it's well composed, it's rear wheel drive, uh, plenty of punch, get up and go and uh, I think that uh, visibility is generally pretty good, out the front it's great, to the side good, at the back very limited because let's face it, it is a hatchback so that glass at the back is small. It's not helped by the fact there's actually three headrests back there so you can actually elect to um, you know, get rid of one of them um, but uh, if you're frequently carrying three passengers across the back there maybe you wouldn't want that, not very sure but um, that's definitely something to note. In my testing with this car, just like the XI, wind noise is the same, it's pretty average. So you're getting a lot from the front, from the A-pillar, from the mirror, from my side glass. Um, it's not terribly unpleasant, uh, but it's definitely not helped by those 18 inch, 18 inch wheels, which are actually um, a one size up from the XI. I think if you want the quieter cabin experience, you probably would want then the XI. Uh, but maybe by the end of the video, you don't. In the essence, probably 
most changes? Hmm, debatable. <laughs> Maybe found inside the car. And that's going to start off with the driver's seat. And that's actually power assisted now six ways. In the X side, it's only four ways. It's really unfortunate that the actual passenger is still manual affair and only four way adjustable, but okay, there you go. In terms of what you're looking at here as a driver, it's identical to the X site. So you've got your little driver's display here and your 10.25 inch over there that controls almost all the car settings. You've got the voice assistant that's built into the car or a long press will activate your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay system. It's a bit limited and uh, it, it works, but limited. Coming to the right side, again, joystick to control the various functions, telephone shortcut, menu button, which actually changes what I see down here. So if I press it now, I can actually shift across to if I'm navigating with the in-car navigation, which this car actually gets. Uh, yeah, it would actually be displaying on there what my next maneuver is gonna be, say turn right in 200 meters. Shifting over another screen, both identical here, that got brightness levels, so over speed threshold, next service, then, what other music is playing and both are the same here like uh, if you're playing some music through Android Auto say it'll be displayed down here which is actually quite nice and then finally we're getting well not finally almost finally we're getting back to tire pressures and then your efficiency and range sort of information delving into here uh, it's uh, almost identical almost but because now you've got some additional features in this car you've got shortcuts to going home to navigation music and telephone and your car settings at the top you can press that to get back to your climate control stuff which is a little bit fussy to be honest but at least now you've got heated steering wheel as well as heated seats and they're found in here um, it would be lovely to see actually the climate controls that is to say temp up and temp down on these hard buttons at the bottom of the screen i don't see why we've got the demisters for the front and rear screens here where in this climate in australia's climate i don't know about you but i seldom actually use them maybe it's because i'm fortunate enough to be able to garage my car and so when i get to it whatever the weather it doesn't need demisting or anything like that uh, you comment below am i wrong by saying that I think uh, you can create a shortcut on this side with the steering wheel and uh, have your climate and do a shortcut that way. And I think that's probably what most people do and I have been doing. But also if you're the passenger, it's a little bit annoying to have to go there because everything you tap on this screen, it's got a little delay. It's, uh, it's slightly annoying. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, you've got the hard buttons across the bottom, home, volume up and down hazards, as well as turn the climate on and off, wasted button in my opinion. Beneath that you've now got a wireless charging pad which is great. Um, I argued, I think I said, I hope I did in the X site, it's probably actually standard equipment these days folks and to have to you know be going up a grade of car just to be able to get wireless charging is yeah, a bit meh and also maybe, just maybe, you should be looking to have, or well, MG, this is for you, uh, wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. And then beneath that, two out of the three USB sockets. One is actually in the rear, talk about that soon. Some good size drink holders in the center, as well as the door bins, which hold a pretty reasonable size bottle. Like in this case, I've got this MG branded um, uh, water bottle, quite a decent size, it's a good 600 mils and uh, fits in there in a cinch. Um, now, question do you like good audio because if you do i think the essence is for you because this car features six speakers and it is so so much better than the x site i can't begin to tell you how worlds apart they are anyone who will tell you that the x site sound system is okay i swear to god you do not know good audio you do not so <laughs> for some people they spend three thousand dollars up on uh, good speakers and that was something I said in the Excite review and that maybe the first thing you should do when you buy that car is actually throw out the little crappy speakers on that and upgrade but and this car is done for you and everything sounds awesome music spoken stuff you name it no issues whatsoever completing out everything uh, again same as the other one you've got your drawback little cubby hole net here for whatever you want to uh, store in that space your center armrest uh, has some uh, hiding space under there and up top you've unfortunately got get this and these little incandescent bulbs here do not cut it and most people in the forums will say i got my mg4 today and the first thing i did is i took out those bulbs and I put in some LED ones. So much brighter, so much better. Mm, yeah, 
So really, really bad, really poor that one. Now this is the SN77, right? Long range version. And uh, MG4 has this rated on the WLTP cycle at 530 kilometers, which, uh, yeah, you know what it's like. The stickers on cars, you're never ever gonna get that range. It's really the absolute um, best you're probably gonna get, unless you're a real <laughs> a feather on that little uh, pedal. Uh, in the week I've had this car, I've been running between, realistically, about 18.3 or 18.6 kilowatt hours per 100 k's. So that's going to mean about 413 kilometers of range from this battery. Um, people have done better and I've just had it in normal mode. Um, I've done probably a few 0 to 100 k per hour acceleration tests and that's definitely taxing on the battery. Uh, and that's going to also affect your um, range but uh, nonetheless I think uh, it's probably for city driving uh, where you've got constant stop start you can you can do better uh, but if you're going to get on freeways I think you're going to be getting this sort of range from this battery which is actually quite decent and um, something that most people will be comfortable with so that means like you're going to be able to drive three four hours before you need to actually think about doing a next charge at a rapid charger somewhere. And uh, road tripping in this car, yeah, I think it's probably the better choice compared to, let's say, the XR. Do not adjust your sets. This is a dark space because, well, it's obviously got dark Alcantara, but importantly, there's no LED lights back here, which is very common, it seems, amongst MG. Like, honestly, it's a... Uh, in my MG ZSV, is nothing in the back there, and ditto back here. So this is just like the XI, seriously. No rear vent, just the one USB socket. You now actually have some uh, map pockets here, so that's lovely. Door bins with little tiny spaces for little tiny bottles, if you can even get them in there. And seating across the rear for three people with Isofix on the outboard. Um, it's pleasant, there's plenty of good room back here, considering that it is a small hatchback car. Uh, but again, um, I would I would hope that when you go up a grade of car, that you actually get improved lighting, which is pretty common amongst most car makers. So yeah, MG, think about it. So with that said, uh, let's talk about some of the pluses of this car. And I've got to say, it is a small hatchback, right? Knee room is brilliant. Look at all this space here under the under the seat as well. Headroom is okay, and across the back here, sitting three people, it's going to be a bit tight, but again, it's small, so I'd expect that. The seats finish off in this mixture of cloth and leatherette, aka vinyl, is eh, it's, it's, it's good. Um, the Excite's just as good. Uh, I think there's gone for a little bit more premium looking here, and it's, it's, it's probably excellent for Australian summers where you don't, you're not going to get that hot, sticky thing under your thighs, so yeah good choices here. When it comes to charging the MG4, there's a few little notes here which I need to be very careful about explaining. And the first one is that if you get the SN64, your DC fast charging is going to be up to 140 kilowatts maximum. That's a fair number, it's actually pretty good to be honest. Uh, but if you go for the long range, that's going to go to 144 kilowatts. Only four kilowatt difference, but still nonetheless, that might make the difference between, let's say, a ooh, 28 minute charge versus 30, 32 minute charge. If to some people, that's maybe super important. But I guess also the other issue to know here is that at home, you can, with the long range, get up to three phase, 11 kilowatts of fast charging. That's gonna give you up to about, ooh, 80 to 100 kilometers of range per hour. So refilling this battery is only gonna take about four and a half hours or so. Whereas the SN64 only goes up to seven, well, actually 6.6 .6 kilowatts. So yeah, that's only gonna be giving you about 40 kilometers of range per hour. What does that mean to those who are maybe thinking about going electric for the first time? You're going to be thinking about, well, how many kilometers do I drive every day? Do I do the typical average Australian, that is to say 37 to 50 kilometers per day? If that's you. You don't need those faster charging speeds. And if you, especially so if you don't do any like long trips every year, say. Uh, whereas, let's say you do work. Uh, far, far away, 150, 200 kilometers, and you need to replace that every single day. Then maybe 
you probably want to think about the long range because of the improved charging specs. And that's my review of the MG4 Essence. There's a lot to like about this car, honestly, and if you're in the market and can afford to stretch that additional $3,000 or so above the Excite 64, this is an absolute no-brainer. As you've seen from this review, you get a lot of kit for that additional bit of money. And with this one being the 77 long range, if you need that additional bit of range, absolutely, well, it's probably one of Australia's best value electric vehicles, it really is. Uh, yeah, really good stuff here. Good charging characteristics, reasonably efficient, good battery size, fit and finish is excellent. Feature set, good in some areas, like the electric front driver's seat, but not in the passenger seat. LED interior lighting, a bit lacking in the rear still. Thank you to MG for making this video possible. They had no editorial control nor input into this video, by the way. Last week, I got to uh, give the Excite a go for seven whole days, and this one, the Essence, I've also had for seven whole days. And if you want to see maybe a more cohesive comparison between the two different cars, where I compare the MG4 Excite against the Essence, watch this video. Uh, it's going to help you out, particularly if you're on the fence as to which way you go with it. If you've watched this video to now, I've got to say thanks so much. Really do appreciate it. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't. If you want to help the channel out in other different ways, I do stupid uh, thanks as well as Kofi for all my coffee addiction. Check down below as to how you can actually do those things. Otherwise, you'll be good and you'll be green. five-star rated and there's features like I don't know <laughs>